with the first of two 12 lap races the senior races here at Kyrgyzstan and what a start to the front row of the grid it really has turned out to be they're coming around at the end of the warm-up lap and they're in pole position number eight Ron Haslam on the 500 Pepsi Suzuki the Grand Prix bike he shattered the lap record already in practice and it promises to be a battle to see who will finish second to Haslam well the rain may make life difficult for the rest Carl Fogarty second quickest the man who's just clinched the TT Formula One World Championship for the second time next to him the Dubliner Eddie Laycock on a 500 Honda next to him uh, Gary Cowan on the 250 Dock Shop uh, machine next to him number nine Roger Burnett and then number zero there you can see Steve Cole on the JPS Norton so a superb lineup there they are six men on the front row of the grid Burnett is going to be the man who hopes to uh, inflict some sort of authority on this race. He's not had the best of seasons, and we're coming up to contract time. The tension mounts. The, the final man has come round onto the grid. The grid is being cleared. Haslam then shattering the lap record in practice. He's got into the 57s for the first time ever here at Kyrgyzstan. But will this shower of rain make a big difference? All eyes on the starter. It's a clutch start. The official moves across the line. The board is what the light. They head forward and not a good start for Haslam. In fact, a super look, there is the wheelie from Stephen Cole on the north. But it's, it's Roger Burnett. Burnett from Stephen Cole. And they, well, uh, there is Cole on the black at Norton and one or two people taking things a little bit carefully. Well, Roger Marshall here in the commentary box with me. Uh, one or two people a little bit wary about the race. You're not wrong, Chris. And Aslan got a very bad start there. And also Robert Dunlop, who was came out on uh, Eddie Laycock's bike. So uh, that's an interesting situation after he blew his spare bike up in practice. And there is Stephen Cole in second spot and up into the lead is Callum. Philip Callum, the uh, Ulster man who's made a big name for himself on the pure road circuit uh, around the world and look at the pace of the Norton but McCallum is not giving in side by side wheel to wheel now this could be tricky and McCallum leans on the uh, fellow Ulsterman he leaned on the Norton man and that really was a brave piece of riding Roger oh unbelievable I mean Stephen Cull held his line there but McCallum went right round the outside of him incredible and as Cull goes through now on the start and finish and Burnett down in third place now so no substitute for the torque and the horsepower of the North but as I say that McCallum who's a brave boy he really isn't going to give up a tremendous ride and that really is getting fairly desperate there McCallum and Cole wheel to wheel and the rest of the field at the moment forced to play second fiddle 12 laps remember this race and uh, Cole well he's uh, had just uh, one outing so far this year on the north thanks to a problem with Trevor Nation. There goes Cole in the lead. McCallan is in second place. Then it's Roger Burnett behind him. No sign yet on the front three of Ron Haslam on the Pepsi Suzuki. Look at the north. Pull away, Roger. He's got some over there. Incredible speed down there, Chris. I couldn't believe the way it went. Giving the local fans something credible to talk about. McCallan on the brakes was it's just as impressive as Cole was down the straight there. Well, probably more so because uh, Cole really just relying on the motor of the Norton. McCallan on bravery and technique because it's got to be slippy out there. It certainly has, and uh, it'll be interesting to know if anybody went out on intermediate tyres in this race because it's dry. And look at McCallan again uh, McCallan on the brakes there. He's on the inside, Roger. That was the best line. Absolutely perfect, Chris. The way he went through there, he's riding superb. He doesn't look at all hairy, and he's getting the power to the ground. Where the Norton produce an awful lot of horsepower, Cole's having to be a little bit careful, the same as Haslam, I suspect. Haslam went through a couple of screens in practice and bust them, and the mechanics said they didn't want any more braking with all that horsepower. Well, Philip McCallum, just a young man trying to uh, make his mark on short circuits. There's Cole Fogarty, Fogarty then Brian good. Morrison, uh, Gary Cowan there, and Haslam, I think, in about eighth place there. Yeah, incredible, Chris. I can't believe he's so low down at this stage.
And look at McCallan again. Back with the leaders. That's uh, Philip McCallan out in front behind him. Stephen Cole. Oh, and somebody went very wide. I think that was Burnett. Yeah, it probably was, because Roger was actually closing on the first two. Oh, no, he's still there. Well, it was somebody it there was, with the... It was Burnett, yeah. But now and, he's through. And Cole now loses the place. So it's McCallan now from Carl Fogarty. Down to third place goes Cole. Maybe there's a problem with the north because... Uh, it looked nowhere near as impressive as it was. No, it didn't go down, down the straight there. I couldn't believe it then, Chris. He just lost a turn of speed there, whether he missed a gear or something, I don't know. But it looks to be going out there again now. Cole in third place behind him, Roger Burnett. The British boy on the uh, HRC RC30 Honda. But we're back with the race leader and uh, uh, Carl Fogarty, who survived a horrendous car accident earlier in the week. Uh, battling away despite the bumps and the bruises, Brian Morrison, Gary Cowan, number 30, has them moving up just a little bit uh, now, so he's on the charge. He's got a lot of work to do, though, if Mr Hazlitt's going to win this one, Roger. Yeah, I can't see him winning this one, Chris, at all at the moment. And the way Fogarty's pulling him in, I mean, uh, McCallan in, uh, Fogarty is the man of the moment, as we know, and uh, he did an incredible time last week at Donington. He did a minute 37, which is GP 500 time. And look at the back end of that uh, RC30 of Carl Fogarty twisting into Planey there again. Another mighty twitch. Yeah. Well, Fogarty's certainly trying, but the motorcycle and the rear tyre not appreciative of his efforts, Roger. No, and Carl's on the Metzler tyres, uh, which is one of the few runners who run on the big bikes on the Metzlers. So I'd imagine McCallan will be on the, either the Dunlops or the Michelin tyres, but uh, Fogarty pulling him very close to McCallan now. We are on the fifth of 12 laps. Plenty of time for Fogarty to do something. Plenty of time for that matter for Ron Haslam to get in the scene. Obviously, the track is drying out and that McCallan is still holding off. Carl Fogarty, and it really is an impressive ride from McCallum. McCallum came to the forefront, uh, of course, with uh, his Manx Grand Prix performances, and then, of course, the Isle of Man TT. Yeah, he's riding very well at the moment, and he's had a, a really good year in Northern Ireland as well. But look at Fogarty there, coming in close again. Oh, and Haslam's gone straight on there. That's Ron Haslam overshooting, trying hard to get back on the pace, and he's lost an awful lot of ground. Well, he was the first man we saw overshoot, and we saw, in fact, Fogarty second before that get a real nasty slide on the back end. And Fogarty, Fogarty goes on the inside. Fogarty goes through on the inside to take the lead. So the boy from Blackburn in Lancashire, Carl Fogarty, now leads from Ulsterman, filling McCallum. Fogarty from McCallum. Fogarty getting an awful twitch on there, so he obviously means that he's going to go for it now. Probably read his board that Aslan was maybe coming up a bit quick, which he was, and if Ron had to made that mistake there, he would have soon been on the pace, but he's left himself an awful lot of work. And McCallan has disappeared. We've appeared to block there. That's 14, that's uh, George Farlow. Well, that really is very sad indeed. Farlow dislocated the shoulder early in the week and uh, battling uh, against uh, doctor's wishes to be racing here. There is Steve Cole. That's uh, Lee Norton. Great, great to see the British motorcycles back uh, on the scene again and going so well. But uh, McCallum was the man who disappeared a little bit uh, from our picture, we thought. There, we'll check on that. Demand. Cole, he, I think, is in third place. We'll just check with our lap scorer. And uh, we have lost uh, McCallan. It's Fogarty then, Steve Cole up into second place. We'll try and find out what happened to McCallan. McCallan down to seventh place, so whether, whether he made mistake. There's Cole in uh, second spot, the net in third place. And, uh, well, Hanslam getting back into the picture. Yeah. Roger, there's Cole, he's second, ahead of Roger Burnett. Yeah, and also Gary Cowan having a great ride there in the top six at the moment, so that's very impressive on a 250. And Burnett closing on Cull again, and Cowan closing on them, and Haslam's coming right back into the fray again after an overshooting, and he's closing in all three of them. There are five riders, and they are closing in, and look at Ron Haslam. That was superb. Just a bit of a glimpse there of the pace. Now, will he overshoot this time? No, oh. a better line this time. Haslam tighter going through. There's Brian Morrison. There is uh, Phil McCallan, I think it was. And Paul Burnett behind them. Haslam. One, a second, third, and fourth. And the second, third, and fourth men closing up. And Haslam is not out of this by any manner of means. Haslam, 33 years of age. And Burnett goes through on the inside, trying to pass. 
there is Fogarty, the leader. Burnett through to second place. Cole holds on to third spot. Haslam leaning one side, then the other. Oh, dear, did you see the Suzuki there, Roger? Yeah, I nearly jumped off my chair, Chris. An incredible twitch there. 150 brake horsepower there at the back wheel, and uh, Ron's having an awful lot to hold that bike there because uh, it's very bumpy on this circuit, and the track's dry now, so he'll be trying extra hard. Then in the main, the riders all on full wet tyres, and as the track dries out, Roger, that's not going to be the most perfect of combinations. No, I was quite surprised when they all went out on wets. So I thought somebody might have took a chance one of the top runners have gone out on intermediates because Owen oh, Burnett goes very wide there and he's let Haslam through into second place. So Haslam up now to second place, doing a great job there. Oh, Ron gets another good slide off coming off the start and finish, but he holds it. Haslam then in second place, Burnett in third spot, Cole there in fourth place. All the time, though, Carl Fogarty is out in front and the chase is on to catch him. Well, Fogarty has exactly the same problems that the men behind do, and that is they're running on full wet, shredded tyres, and as the track dries out, it's going to be more and more difficult. And there's an well, interesting situation, a 250 in front of the JPS Norton. Gary, Gary Cowan on the 250, having gone ahead there of the Norton of Stephen Cole, there was the leader going through, Haslam through the chicane, then Burnett, then Gary Cowan, then Stephen Cole. Interesting situation now, can Haslam catch Fogarty after Fogarty's made a good break right from the beginning and pulled a nice lead and now it'll be very interesting to see this GP star, see if he can move up. Well, Steve Cole used the Norton's pace to get ahead of Gary Cowan and Gary Cowan simply outrode him by going through on the brakes on the inside. So it's Fogarty on the RC30 Honda, the 750 four-stroke Honda, being chased by Ron Haslam on the 500 two-stroke Grand Prix Pepsi Suzuki. They've done now uh, nine laps there on their tenth, so just over two laps to go. And I'll probably have to eat my words. I said Aslan wouldn't do it, but uh, he's closing in very quick now on Fogarty, and uh, he's looking good on these last two laps. Well, I think we're in for a grandstand finish because Fogarty in practice got down into the low 58s. Haslam, a record-breaking uh, high 57s. But we know they can both go very... And Gary Cowan up into third place. Ahead now, Roger Burnett, Steve Cole and Brian Morrison. And that is absolutely fabulous. That is incredible, Chris. I mean, he's a GP star, as we know, Gary Cowan. And uh, to pull the stops out on these big fights like he is doing with these couple of long straights in it is absolutely incredible. And the gap now between the race leader and Ron has them something less than uh, well 50 yards and you saw the Suzuki twist to complain and Fogarty knows that he's being chased he knows he's being caught they've now completed 10 laps two more laps to go and can Fogarty hang on well he might but has them getting closer and closer and closer and we'll certainly see a turn of speed here as they're coming up towards the chicane just before the back straight and we'll see if Haslam can close in on him well, they're both uh, riding on a nightmare. It's like uh, trying to walk on the sheet ice on leather sole shoes, isn't it, at the it, moment out there, Roger? It certainly is, and by now the back rear tyres will be breaking up a little bit because the track's drying and it will be ripping them apart as well as the slippery bits of track will be catching them out as well. So for both men, the this, problem is and has them bobbing out of the... Oh, and he just glides back oh, on the Now that will be a little bit like a red rag to a ball, Roger. It certainly will because uh, Carl, I know he, he, he doesn't like losing and he'll want to win, he'll want to keep his form up, but uh, I hope he doesn't do anything silly against such incredible bike with so much horsepower. They're on the final lap. This is the 12th and final lap. Haslam now out in front. He was down in eighth place, remember, early on. And suddenly the Grand Prix star, the Grand Prix man, finished once again. And he does it every year in the top 10 of the 500 World Championship, showing his paces. So. Sir. Certainly a good ride, Chris, by Ron. I mean, a lot of people give him a lot of stick at the GPs, but he flies a flag for England, and uh, when it comes down to a circuit like this, you just see the style and flair that he's got. And the experience, of course. Haslam coming up to pass a couple of tail enders, and that will give Fogarty a chance to close the gap on him, but... Uh, and uh, Haslam safely passed one. Yes, on the inside, safely past the, the other. Last one's coming up. And Haslam then, wheelie over the line. The chequered flag go 
throws out. Ron Haslam then, the winner, a superb victory in the second place, Carl Fogarty. Good ride from him, and what a performance from Gary Coward on the 250 dock shot machine. Takes third place ahead of Roger Bennett and Steve Cole. But first blood, first victory for Ron Haslam. Ron Haslam, many congratulations, but uh, dare I say you did it the hard way. Yeah, it, uh, wet conditions, I'd not really tested in the wet, and uh, I was a bit too cautious at the beginning, and they seemed to get away a little bit, but uh, once I got to grips with it and find out where the slippy bits were, I, I was all right after that. I'm looking at the overtaking of Carl Fogarty, the Suzuki was really fast. <laughs> yeah, the machine is really quick compared to the others, it's a Grand Prix bike, and uh, it's one of the top Grand Prix bikes, so it's, uh, it's a really good, good machine. Looking forward to the rest of the day? Yeah, I hope, uh, hope it dries up. Uh, now I've had a wet one, I'd like a dry one. So, uh, you know, get a bit more fun out of it then. Okay, Ron, thanks a lot. Well done. Thank you. So, as I said, our reporter, Edward Smith, uh, was in the pit area looking for some colourful personnel. We are certainly looking forward to this one. Thank you very much indeed. And what a lineup once again we've got for this Sunflower Trophy race. Ron Haslam, who had to come charging through from the back once again in pole position shattering the lap record in the practice in the dry well he wasn't able to do that in the wet but uh, the track good now uh, further along the front row of the grid number zero that's steve cole on the jps norton next to him number four carl fogarty who had that tremendous battle uh, with uh, ron haslam in the first senior race and we expect fogarty to be up there again 30 gary cowan on the 250 did so well a man definitely not to be ignored in the equation. Roger uh, Burnett on the 750 uh, HRC Honda. And uh, completing the front row of the grid, the Dubliner, number one, Eddie Laycock, on the 500 Honda. Well, this one over 12 laps once again. Haslam, everyone, in fact, on slick tyres. A whole different ball game to the first race. They're watching the lights, the lights change, and away they go. And this time a much, much better start for Ron Haslam, wheeling his way, but he does it in the front first. Carl Fogarty once again makes an excellent start. Fogarty out in front, Ron Haslam in second place. It's Fogarty who leads, Carl Fogarty on the 750 Honda, the Appleby Glade Honda. Ron Haslam in second spot, the rest of the pack trying to uh, sort a path through the general melee looks to me like roger burnett there in third place i would say roger yes that is roger burnett in third chris carl like you said made a superb start fogarty haslam then burnett then that's philip mccallan i think up in fourth spot now mccallan we saw up with the leaders early on he hit problems halfway through that first senior race roger what was the problem uh, the same as he had at mondello the week before he missed a gear it went into neutral, like when you don't get a gear in your car, and he run on the grass and nearly fell off. Well, McCallum making a better start this time, hoping for better things, and look at Haslam, winding up the wing, closes onto the rear tyre of Carl Fogarty, and Ron Haslam looks as though he's got the pace and the motorcycle to get ahead when he wants to. He closed the gap like a rocket ship onto the rear tyre of Carl Fogarty and again you saw what 150 brake horsepower does when you've wanked the power down onto a patch of rubber well as big as your hand isn't it Roger? Uh, yes Chris I mean uh, the bike that Ron's on is producing all that horsepower on about a three inch patch of rubber when he's got it lent on its side so uh, you know it takes some control. Leacock in fourth place behind Philip McKellar, Andy McLeary, all the way from uh, the northeast, Darlington, in fifth place on France Steel Motors uh, RC30 Honda. The rest of the pack. Oh, and somebody who goes uh, has a bit of an excursion. At the that was the scenic route, Roger. There. Uh, yeah, I should say he was pleased to get away with that. He nearly run right up to the grass first. Fogarty then, still holding on grimly to the lead. Ron Haslam on the 500. Pepsi Suzuki, the four-cylinder two-stroke Grand Prix machine. Then Roger Burnett still up there. I think there was Eddie Laycock uh, moving ahead of McCallan to go into fourth spot. There is Ron Haslam. Number eight, he's in second place at the moment. Fogarty, number four. 
eight at the back. Roger Burnett from Lincolnshire, Paul the mechanic of the man alongside me, Roger Marshall, and Burnett goes wide, and uh, that gave McCallan chance to go through on the inside, but McCallan wasn't quite close enough to take advantage of it. Fogarty still leads from Haslam, and Burnett very, very close to throwing away third place. A bit of a, a bad mistake there from your ex-mechanic, Roger. Yeah, he said in the first race with the rain, he found it very difficult to judge the break in there. And uh, he's probably trying to break a little bit later and a little bit later. And uh, he just overshot the corner a little. And uh, Fogarty, who wasn't able to hold off Haslam in the first race, well, he's having a, making a better job of it this time. Yes, and I think Fogarty is a little bit happier to be on the dry tyres, uh, the slick tyres with no tread, because uh, in the wet he said he changed the gearing and he's not happy at all with the Metzler on the rear. Fogarty, Haslam shadowing him then. Coming round to complete four laps. So eight more laps to go there, and Haslam goes past. It was just like applying the afterburner, wasn't it? Unbelievable, Chris. I mean, that GP motorcycle is some machine, isn't it? It's incredible. He just turns the power on with the throttle and uh, just seems to be able to stand it on the back wheel or do anything with it. Well, Haslam, you can see the front wheel pouring the air as Haslam winds on the power, and the bike wants to loop on the back axle. Again, the front wheel just, well, more in the air than on the floor, and Haslam has just destroyed the opposition. Whether Fogarty has hit problems, we don't know, but certainly Haslam has just stretched an enormous advantage. Well, where is Fogarty? Fogarty's out. Fogarty's touring. There he is. Paul, Carl Fogarty in trouble. Well, it's been... A a meeting that he won't forget. Uh, last week he was involved in a very, very nasty road accident and uh, was lucky to escape. And there's the gap, there's the leader going out of feature. Now, who is it going to be for second place? Roger Burnett in second spot at the moment. Phil McCallan in the third place behind him. Then Eddie Laycock in the fourth spot. There's McCallan, there's Eddie Laycock. Looks to me like uh, Brian Morrison, I think, or maybe Andy McGladry in fourth place. There's the race leader. There is Haslam, the race leader. Now, this is the gap. That is how much distance he's put between the rest. There's Roger Millett in second place, then McCallum, then Eddie Laycock, then Brian Morrison, then Gary Coward, then it was Andy McGladry uh, up there. David Leach on the Wiley and Holland uh, Yamaha, well down at the moment. Uh, he's had a good season racing mainly in Northern Ireland, but not here. There's Burnett second. McCallan and Eddie Laycock. Eddie Laycock trying so hard to close. I think for the local interest as well, Chris, it's a shame that the Norton's not showing a bit more pace with Stephen Cullough. I know he had a tyre problem himself in the first one, but uh, whether he's got an engine problem this time, it, I don't know. But he's a uh, fair way behind this pack that we're watching now. Well, indeed, uh, one of the problems with the Norton is it is so powerful, it literally just uh, chews up rear tyres, no matter how hard a compound they put down, don't they? Well, Burnett there, he's in second place. Haslam well out on his own, and look at the battle behind. McCallum, then Laycock, Brian Morrison now ahead of Gary Cowan, then Andy McGlebury, then uh, Robert Dunlop, then number seven, David Leach. He's trying to get back on terms with that group. There is the race leader, and the front wheel just gently rises into the air. 33 years of age, Ron Haslam married with two children. Both his children here to watch and his wife, Anne Haslam. Burnett in second place. And this is a very good ride from Roger Burnett. There's a lot of pressure, a lot of challenge behind. Some very good men on some very good motorbikes. And a change there. Oh, no. Well, that was Gary Cowan who was giving uh, Eddie Laycock a hard time. Cowan on the 250. Laycock on the 500 on there. And uh, look at that little three-way group at the left of the picture there. They're battling for fourth, fifth and sixth place. 
and really getting very, very ferocious. Burnett through the chicane, then the Philly McCallum, then Eddie Lakoff. Coward is there, Brian Morrison. Well, Brian Morrison, what, just over a year ago, or a little bit more than a year ago, was unbeatable, Roger Marshall, wasn't he? Yeah, I think Brian is uh, pleased to be starting to come back to a bit of form after his win the other week, but uh, he has been off form this year, and the TT didn't do him any good at all. He come back into one frame of mind, and he's had bike trouble, but uh, he did have a win at Mallory, and I thought he might be up front today, but uh, he's struggling a little bit. The order, there's Roger Millett, and there's Brian Morrison, who's got ahead of Gary Cowan, the distinctive Lila, and look at Cowan throw on the inside on the break. Oh, Superb piece of riding by Gary Cowan, and Brian Morrison can do nothing about it. Totally offline, what a great man. Cowan goes back, and he lays off as well. Oh, Two riders in less than 300 yards, Roger. Oh, that's unbelievable, Chris. Just the way he went through there is incredible on the break. And now, Gary Cowan on the 250, he's got Philip McCallan in his sight, and you wouldn't lay any money on him not passing Philip McCallan. You certainly wouldn't, Chris. I mean, look at the speed of these bikes against 250. Man, it's holding its own very well. But look at Laycock on an XGP 500. And uh, number 15, that was Andy McBather. He's just uh, wheeling out. And there's this battle. Three abreast. And Gary Cowan did him again on riding. He just outbreak them. He'd lost out. Now, the back straight. They went past him like rocket ships. And there they go again. But he's only until the next corner, Roger. I think there's probably a bit of pride at stake here, don't you, Chris? I mean, uh, 250 diving under you. <coughs> well, yes, it's uh, the sort of thing where you could be pushed into making a mistake here. And I don't think it's Gary Cowan who's going to make the mistake. McCallum, number 17. Uh, just, and Gary Cowan wants to go round him. Gary Cowan goes round him. McCallum on the inside. Cowan went round him. Well, Roger Marshall, what can you say about this 250 boy? Really superb. I'm having his job sitting in the seat here, Chris. I mean, the way he just went round Philip there was totally unbelievable. And would you believe it? Gary Cowan is up to third place, not for long. The 250 just hasn't got the legs, but he outbreaks them all again. And McCallum now wants. Oh no! That was Brian Morrison, I think, who wanted to be brave. Well, Gary Cowan will not give in. He's riding more smoothly, more intelligently and certainly more bravely than any of those men with him. I think he's uh, pushed some of them into making the odd mistake there, Chris. I mean, they realise he's on a small engine, 250, and uh, they're all on 750cc engines with a lot more horsepower. Now, on the 11th lap in this 12th lap battle, there was Eddie Laycock, and we're back now with the race leader who is coming round just a couple of hundred yards to go to start his 12th and final circuit. Ron Haslam, one of the nicest men in racing. And you can see the lead. He's just destroyed the opposition. It's been a one-man show, but what a battle it's been behind. There goes Haslam. Just one lap to go now for Ron Haslam on the Pepsi Suzuki. Haslam. A very, very, very good race leader. And we're back with the battle behind Roger Minnett. And that looks like Gary Cowan, who wants, wants to be snapping at his heels on this final circuit, Roger. Can a 250 beat Roger Minnett and take second place? Uh, well, Gary Cowan got a third in the first senior race today. And uh, he's got right up to Burnett. Obviously, he's going to have to uh, try and catch a little bit of his slipstream. That means tucking him behind the bike, down the back straight, and probably outbreak him if he can. He'll want to tow, won't he, down the back straight. He'll want to be pulled along by the wind by Roger Burnett in second place. We're back with the leader, Ron Haslam. Well, he looks over his shoulder. I think you can keep looking for about 30 seconds, Ron, to see where the next man is. And it really has been a tremendous victory. The checkered flag goes out. Now, is Cowan going to take second place? That's the question we ask. Round the last corner for the final time, and Burnett will have it on the legs with the Honda. Roger Burnett takes second place. Gary Cowan finishes in third spot. And what a superb ride. Brian Morrison is in fourth place. Philip McCallan is in fifth spot and Eddie Laycock is in sixth place but this race belongs to that man Ron Haslam Steve Cole on the JPS Norton can uh, 
show exactly what he's made of. A depleted uh, grid, but certainly the quality is there, even if the quantity isn't, Roger. It certainly is, Chris. Uh... So, the... Just waiting to get Stephen Coles uh, Norton fired up. They're on the front row of the grid, all eyes on the line. This will be a 12-lapper. There is Haslam. Haslam then looking for the hat trick and a bit of a ragged start, but Haslam not too badly away. And I think it's going to be the North. It is Steve Cole of the North who makes it. Roger Burnett in second place. And uh, Ron Haslam, well, oh goodness gracious me. That was Gary Cowan. Gary Cowan who storms through to take the lead. That really was incredible. I mean, he's just riding so good, isn't he, Chris? I mean, he just br outbreak the Norton like it was going backwards. It's hard to believe. He's on the crest of the wave. He's had some good rides. And would you believe that in this senior race, a 250 Yamaha leads. He leads the Norton. Then Brian Morrison. Then Roger Burnett. And we're looking there. Is, would you believe it is Ron Haslam of the Pepsi Suzuki? He must have been in about 10th place, Roger. It certainly was, Chris. He made a bad start on the first uh, left-hander. He got in the middle of the pack and he couldn't. there was nowhere for him to go, so he's got a lot of work. Brian Morrison beginning to put some pressure on second-place man Steve Cole. There, going round the hairpin as the leader goes over the start finish line was Ron Hassel. And, and it is incredible that Gary Cowan, who took the lead about one-third of the opening lap into the front, is still out in front. Uh, Ron Aslan there, Chris, was looking down at the rear end of the motorcycle, so whether he's got a problem maybe with the tyre, we'll have to wait and see. No problem for this man, Gary Coward, out in front on the second and 12 lap. And he's, not, he's pulling away from the opposition. Absolutely incredible. Steve Cole, then Brian Morris, then Roger Burnett, then it was Phil McCallum, and there's Eddie Laker. Oh, and a bit of a problem there. For number 27, Steve Haslett. Well, at the end of the race for Steve Haslett, only his pride injured, though. I'm glad to say, Steve Cole in second place for Brian Morrison. There is, uh, well, that's uh, George Farlow going straight on, and he's riding with uh, a dislocated shoulder, so uh, not really a surprise, I think, uh, Roger. Yeah, George Farlow, he's had some problems today. He's had an engine seizure on his three-cylinder, and I just wonder if it's seized maybe coming down the straight into that corner and he have to go straight on. And uh, word from the pits is that um, Eddie Laycock has just pulled out, so uh, end of the race for the Dubliner. No problems, no worries at all, though, for Gary Cowan. And really, you begin to ask whether anyone's going to catch him, Roger. Well, I just can't believe this, Chris. I mean, uh, he's got the HRC works right behind him. He's got the North behind him. He's on a 250. And Steve Cole on the North. And another one we were depleted on the start line. And they are dropping out like flies. And still, the 250 of Gary Coward is out in front. He goes around the hairpin. Brian Morrison up into second place. And Roger Burnett made a complete of that little corner there. Yeah, he certainly did, Chris. Obviously, he was trying to get up with uh, uh, Gary Cowan, who's leading, and, and make some impact, but uh, he left the brakes a little too late and maybe locked the front wheel a little bit and had to let the brake off again and go, and go really wide. Ron Haslam is in eighth place at the moment, the man looking for his hat trick. But, uh, well, he's got a lot of juice to catch up the race leader, I'll tell you that, there is Phil McCallum in third place, behind him Roger Minnett, Gary Coward, then Brian Morrison, then Phil McCallum, then Roger Burnett. Haslam moving ahead of another place, Dave Leach was the man who lost one place. Machine. It did, yeah, and just in front of the net, Phil and, Phil and Callum was nearly making the same mistake as the net did the lap before by overbreaking. So, the Dock Shop Yamaha, just a 250cc motorcycle, leads the 750 Honda of Brian Morrison, then it's McCallum and Burnett, and Haslam is now, whatever the problems were, he's talking about Morrison, the Scotsman, 
He had such a wonderful season last year. From Kirkcaldy in five, 28 years of age. Now, can he catch Gary Cowan? Can he get ahead? Can he win this one? It's a long time since Brian Morrison had a big win this year. It is, Chris. Uh, one of the only wins he's had was at the race of the year at Mallory Park in the last 1,000cc race. I'm pleased that Brian's coming back on form. He hasn't done it with you. He's had a lot of engine problems, but uh, he's looking good in this one. But I think Haslam's going to be the danger man still. Now, he, if he had a problem, well, it's all sorted out now. Five laps gone as Brian Morrison hits the front. Morrison leads from Gary Coward, but only for a fraction of a second, because as Brian Morrison thought about going into the right-hander, Gary Cowan had done it. Well, if there was an award for late braking, Gary Cowan would get it, because he's going into the end of that start and finish straight. Unbelievable. He's just leaving his brakes off to the very last minute and stopping that little 250 beautifully. The 250, of course, much lighter than the 750, uh, Roger, but nowhere near so powerful. Hasn't got the acceleration. He certainly hasn't, and uh, you've still got to pull that 250 up, I know, but uh, you haven't got the weight of the big bike, but there's Morrison showing us how much speed he's got. And Cowan going through on the inside, and Gary Cowan says, well, you can be as quick as you like down the straight the time, but you're not going to be as quick as me into and round the corner. And look at them, both flat off the tank, they both be this is over the line they go again, six laps gone the halfway stage in this race, six laps gone, six to go. And again, Gary Cowan does it in exactly the same place, and Brian Morrison must be living. He must be wondering what he has to do to get away from Gary Cowan, because Gary Cowan can really stop that 250. Um, like you said, because it's not so heavy, so it's a lot easier to pull up when you put the brakes on. Morrison's got twice the weight there, with his bike being a four-stroke and having four cylinders. And uh, that looks to me like Ronald McDonald Haslam, the Grand Prix star in third place, and Morrison goes past Cowan. Cowan will look for the inside line, and Cowan goes back again. And Cowan regains the lead, and Morrison wants to be brave, but both of them are in for the shot. Well, it's not a shot, because they were... Oh, and look at the rear end of Ron Haslam's Suzuki. And uh, Haslam has arrived. I warned you he was going to arrive. He was charging up through the field. There is Cowan in first place. Brian Morrison is in second place. And, uh, well, they're about to take the Pepsi taste challenge, I think. Yeah, well, obviously, Ron's got the right bike for the job with it being a Grand Prix bike, but he's certainly putting a great show on for everybody here today, and it's super to see him riding it so hard and wheeling everywhere. It's fantastic. Let's take nothing away, though, from these two men in front of him. Ron Haslam is catching them. Ron Haslam is going to catch them. Ron Haslam almost certainly will pass them. But what a ride from Gary Cowan and Brian Morrison. Brian Morrison, look at the pace of the Suzuki. And Cowan again goes for the inside line. And Ron's trying to pass all of them around the outside. Well, that was truly impressive. Cowan leads. Morrison leads. Ron has to pass the ball with the wheelie. Seven laps gone. Eight laps gone. Let's get it right. Eight laps gone. Four more laps to go. And Ron has them. And Cowan's going to pass them both. Gary Cowan, no respecter of authority, age, experience, or wealth, and I say wealth in terms of cost of motorcycles, because that 500 Suzuki in second place, well, how much would that cost to buy, uh, Roger Marshall? Well, if you wanted that particular one of Haslam's today, you'd probably have to pay 100, 200,000 for it. It must be worth that much. And uh, Gary Cowan on basically a production Yamaha. Oh, and look at Haslam. Say, don't play silly so and so with me, thank you very much indeed. And Gowan says, well, no, yes, not this time, and the tail end gets in the way. And Ron has to have to go wider than he wanted, and Gary Cowan almost went through on the inside again. Ron Haslam will not be allowed to doze, he won't be allowed to take things easily. Well, I think if anyone before this meeting would have told you that Gary Cowan on a 250 Yamaha would be the man who was going to give Ron Haslam a hard time in any of the open races, you would have said he was insane.
Well, I would have bet everything I own that it, would, it wouldn't be possible, Chris. And uh, he's demonstrating that it can be done on a 250 today. We've seen the speeds at Grand Prix and on British circuits creep down the 250 times. And uh, he's proving today that a 250 nearly on the right circuit can keep up with them. And uh, Ryan Haslam looking for the uh, showtime, looking for the wheelies. Knock on the pace. Well, look at the Yamaha come back. The others put on the brakes while Cowan is still accelerating. Haslam leads. Cowan goes back into second place. Morrison is third. They are coming round to complete ten laps. Two more laps to go. And Haslam wheelies half the length of the start finish straight. Morrison goes back into second place. But I wouldn't hold your breath, Brian. And again, Cowan does it again. And they close on Haslam. I think Ron is obviously enjoying himself now, but he's going to be ever so, have to be ever so careful on the last corner if he's wheeling on the back straight because Cowan certainly won't give in. And Cowan, it was again looking for that big tire line, but that was the line that Ron Haslam had got. Well, this is the first non-world championship race meeting that Ron Haslam has been able to ride in this year. And it, I'm sure he never thought that Gary Cowan would be giving him a hard time in it. Ron Haslam thoroughly enjoying himself. He likes riding uh, in Northern Ireland. He's ridden in the northwest. Oh, and Cowan going through on the inside of Morrison. Fourth to move over. Cowan didn't give him any choice there, did he? We're coming up to the start of the 11th, of the 12th and final lap. One lap to go, Roger. This is incredible stuff, the way Cowan's outbreaking Brian. I don't think Brian knows what to do next. Here he goes again, showing the lightweight bike how he can stop it. Gary Cowan up into second place again. Haslam just a few yards away from them. Cowan riding superbly. Let's take nothing away from Brian Morrison, though, of course, on the 750 Honda. More cubic capacities, but heavier. Probably a little bit slower, maybe, out of the corners. And if Haslam dozes too much, Cowan could have it. There's a tail ender in the way, and Ron Haslam can't afford to doze. The slower man, Haslam, goes past. Cowan, chin on the tank, doesn't want to lose any pace down the back straight. And Morrison, oh, Cow Cowan goes through on the inside again. Oh, and he goes wide. He makes a mistake, and he may pay for it. Haslam is going to win. Who is going to be second? Haslam wins. The sprint is on to the line. And I really would like to say, maybe Morrison. We think it was Morrison. Gary Cowan is third. Well, what a superb race to bring this wonderful Kirkustown meeting to an end. Ron Haslam the winner, Brian Morrison takes second place, and Gary Cowan, a brave fighting Gary Cowan, takes third spot. Right, Ron Haslam.